Basically, we're old-fashioned uh, stock pickers, uh, typically looking for businesses that uh, we believe we understand and that might be going through some sort of short-term severe cyclical event, uh, which is transitory rather than being permanent. And that's generally when we find our best opportunities. So basically buying straw hats in winter. Information's always been you know, readily available. Um, and today though, it's even more so, you know, and we call it the, uh, the Google impact, uh, where basically you can go on a computer, search for whatever you want, and get very, very detailed information on anything you're looking for. Really all it does is reinforce that the most important uh, part of the equation is really your underlying investment philosophy and the, and the discipline in sticking to it. Uh, and that's really what's going to make a difference over the longer haul. The only uh, area that really has had a big impact is the fact that that herd of investors is now a lot bigger. Uh, Historically, it'd be you know, domiciled in either the US or the UK or Australia, and you tend to look at your own market. But now we've got one big herd, which means when um, they stampede or they get uh, excited, uh, either too bullish or too bearish, it can go a lot further than it normally went. And so you do have to adjust your mindset in terms of sometimes you've got to be a lot more patient before you get to the bottom. Uh, and other times you just got to be willing to let markets kind of run ahead of themselves because it really is hard to find out when that herd's going to turn course. The one thing that you keep getting reminded of is um, trust your own instincts. You know, whenever you let someone else's thought process interfere with your decision making, it usually ends up uh, costing you money. Um, so bottom line is you've got to do the work. Uh, and you've got to back your own judgment and try and stay away from that abundance of noise uh, that's out there, particularly in today's social media world, um, and make up your own mind after listening you know, to all the facts. Yeah, I think there's a couple of key advantages um, being here in Australia, and, and, and one we've always said, look, you know, the real big advantage is that we're a long way away from the the trading hubs of New York and London and therefore less vulnerable to being influenced by the short-term noise and that's uh, really you know, one of the key planks of, uh, of what we believe in terms of our investment philosophy. But importantly we're Australian dollar based investors so the reality is we do think of the currency, we do think of the local tax rules and the reality of life is that if you're being managed by one of the big global managers that are based offshore and you're a little part of their pie you realistically can't expect them to be considering you know, the currency uh, and local tax laws uh, in their investment decisions. Yeah, Franken credits is an interesting one because when they first came out, um, no one paid any attention to them, uh, didn't believe that they would make any difference to the valuation of stocks. When the reality is it's more cash in your hands. So it did mean that an Australian business was more valuable than an equivalent business offshore uh, because you ended up with more money in your pocket by our, um, after tax dividends. Now what's happened is slowly the markets uh, adjusted to that and as all markets do they go from one extreme to the other and now we've gone to the extreme where a lot of these franking credits are probably being overvalued. It's been reinforced by the fact that we've had lower bond yields consistently for the last 10 years but the reality is all the franking issues are now well and truly priced into local stocks and I would actually argue that people have now taken it too far. They're totally uh, myopic in terms of their view on, on franking credits and that's dictating their investment decisions when the reality is you're going to come back to fundamentals. You know, is this a business that's going to grow its core earnings at a decent rate and is it reasonably priced by the market? And if we look at the market today, I would argue that there's a lot of stocks that are overvalued purely from a domestic investor's chase for uh, you know, dividend yield and, and franking credits. I think everyone has a, has a bias to their home market and it's just familiarity. Um, you know, what you can see, what you can touch. Um, and so, you know, versus, you know, I guess the harder work of going offshore and really finding where the best opportunities are. I think in a global world those home biases will slowly dissipate but it's amazing at the moment in Australia the reality is I'd suspect 98% of people's invested money is in fact still 
domestically based. So it shows the bias is, is very, very strong. And typically what breaks that is a period of underperformance by the local market versus offshore markets. And interestingly, over the last six months, you've seen a big crack in the Australian dollar. You've seen the local market really start to struggle. I think there's probably a 20%, maybe even 30% differential between offshore and onshore markets the last 12 months. So I think that psyche will now start to change. And, and as we've been suggesting, you know, the trick is getting ahead of that and taking advantage of an elevated currency uh, and better valuations offshore. So um, you know, we believe that will still be the case for the next three to five years. Well, I mean, passive strategies, um, I mean, whatever the market does is, is what your return's gonna be. And I think it's, a lot of people are hiding behind it because it's a simple way to, to deal with the bureaucracy, um, you know, low fees, um, and you own what everyone else owns. But we've never believed that's an investment philosophy. The reality of the investment world is at any one particular point of time, that's only a small minority of investments that you actually wanna own. You wanna own the anomalies, not what's fairly valued. So we've always believed in that process, we always will. Hopefully it shows through in our, our numbers uh, since inception. I think the fund's up about 260% uh, versus the market being approximately 60%. So it does show that um, you know, little differences here and there over a long period of time add up to a, to a large amount. So we're very much believers that um, old fashioned stock picking is in fact the way to go. Um, and again, we think uh, you know, the results uh, are testimony to that uh, thought process.